Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Dev Quickie. Our topic is Isometric Tile Map. Let's get right to it. We are going to be using this Globals Helper class. It allows easier access to the content, sprite batch, and elapsed game time. The input manager checks which keys are pressed and sets the direction vector accordingly. It also provides the current mouse position and the game manager class that will bind everything else together. The map will consist of those tiles. We have five of them for variety. Okay, let's start coding. We start with the tile class. It's the basic block of a map. It has a texture and a position. The constructor is straightforward, as well as the draw method. Now let's make that map class. We define the map size. The tile size will be the dimensions of one tile. Then we need a two-dimensional array of tiles that will be the map itself. In the constructor, we first initialize the array. Then we load all the tile textures. Based on the texture, we set the tile's dimensions. We also need a random number generator to pick a texture. We use a nested for cycle to go through all the tiles in the map. Each tile gets a random texture and a position that we will calculate in the map to screen method. This method will translate the map array indices to the screen space. We will start simple. Let's place the tiles next to each other just to see them on screen to figure things out. The draw method will loop through the tiles. As always, we test things out using the game manager. Initialize the map, add the draw call, and here we go. This tile layout would work for an orthogonal map. To get the isometric view, we will have to adjust the mathematics a bit. So let's go back to the map to screen method. Looking at the tiles diagram, the red arrows are our current formulas. As we can see, the correct green arrows are a little more complex. When moving on the X index of the map, we are actually moving on both axis of the screen. Half a tile width right and half a tile height down. And similarly for the Y index of the map, half a tile width left and half a tile height down. So the final screen coordinates are the combinations of both. And one more thing to notice, the actual tile height is only a half of the texture. Let's see how we did. The tiles are now aligned as we wanted. But the whole map needs to be shifted a bit to be visible. We add a map offset, it's counted in tiles. It will be used in our formulas. But first a small mathematical simplification. And here comes the offset. Let's check how we did this time. Perfect, our isometric tile map is ready. Now we would like to select a tile with a keyboard input. First we edit the tile class to support selection. Add a bool value of the selection state. And two methods to switch it. We will also add a color to the selected tile. The map will remember the selected tile, and pre-select it in the constructor. We are going to need an update method, to change the selection. When the input direction isn't zero, we move the selection. We start by deselecting the last selected tile. Then calculate the new tile's indices. We use a clamp, to ensure we aren't going outside the map. And lastly just select the new tile. Don't forget to call the maps update method in the game manager. And we are ready for another test run. Everything seems okay, the selection is moving as expected, and we cannot go outside the map. Let's add one more feature, selecting a tile by mouse. Let's start by editing the tile again. We will do the same things as for the keyboard. The map will also remember the last mouse selected tile. The update method will start by deselecting that tile. Then it will calculate a tile that's on the cursor's position. We will create a new method called screen to map. It will translate back from the screen space to the map array indices. First it subtracts the map offset. Then we use the matrix inversion to get the formulas, but that is beyond our scope now. The update checks if the new indices are valid, and if so, selects the tile. Okay, it's time for the final test. Both keyboard and mouse selections work perfectly. And that's it for this episode. You can find the code in the description. And if there are any topics you would like to see next, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.